Today we're going to check out a mechanical keyboard that a couple of you have been asking for and this is the Ann or Annie Pro from Obbins. This is one of the few cheap 6% mechanical keyboards in the ready-built market where the poker keyboards from Vortex pretty much dominate this segment because of their good quality and wide availability but also because there's just not many out there. But for many, this can be a bit too expensive or people just want to save a bit of money. So as per usual, we can look to China and their cheaper options. And one of them is this AN Pro in which was generously provided by Banggood.com, which I know many of you will know and is currently on promotion at the moment for a limited amount of time. So check it out. The box is simple and gets straight to the point with a large no frills front with identifiable sides and on the back is a QR code that you scan with your phone although it didn't work for me. Then there's a bunch of secondary functions that we'll have a look at later and then some specs and info. Opening up the box we have the keyboard in a foam bag and then we get a little bag with a sleek looking black and grey flat micro USB cable, a plastic ring keycap puller and finally a Bluetooth USB dongle. And this keyboard hits big with the buzzwords. It's a 60% wireless Bluetooth RGB gaming mechanical keyboard. So as said, this is a 60% keyboard, meaning that it has 6% of the amount of keys in comparison to a full-sized 104 key keyboard. So basically you cut off everything except for the main section and the idea behind it is that you can still put all these less used other functions onto the keyboard with secondary function layers to create a more compact design. And this compact design is useful for ergonomics in that you don't need to move your hands and fingers as far to actuate different keys. And you can also bring your mouse closer to the center as well for a better shoulder positioning. It's also just super easy to put in your bag and carry it around and saves heaps of space on your desk so it's very appropriate for small areas. The keyboard is a completely standard ANSI layout so replacing keycaps won't be an issue at all. As said before you can still do everything on this keyboard but you have to access it via the function key at the bottom. The function row is at the top while the nav cluster which includes insert, delete, page up and all that is spread across the right hand side of the keyboard. The biggest downside for a lot of people is that there's no dedicated arrow keys and is why 65% keyboards are really enticing to many. There are two spots for the arrow keys on here. There's the ones on the WASD keys which makes sense and then some towards the right on the I, J, K and L keys which is the same on the poker boards and also utilizes the homing bump on the J key for more easier positioning. So it's something that you'll have to get used to and many have and live by it with some going further with the likes of the popular 40% keyboards. The keyboard being a 60% stays true to a simple and clean aesthetic. 60% boards are compact in nature so the case design tends to follow suit. The one that I have today is a collector's edition but it doesn't differ in design besides the colour in which this one is yellow but it's also available in black, white, blue and pink so a good variety to choose from which is awesome. The case design is very similar to a poker. It has thin bezels but has more squarish pointy corners and is also chamfered. And it has the same inclined side profile with tapered sides that gives the thinning effect and a sleek angular look. The plastic casing has a standard satin textured finish to it which looks fine and doesn't show any fingerprints and stuff. The hue of the yellow itself is very deep and warm as it goes a touch towards orange. These keyboards come with white keycaps which is appropriate for the colours it comes in and gives the keyboard a more light and clean feel and accentuates the colour of the case. The font or typeface on the keycaps in my tastes are decent. They're not the best but they don't go as far as the other more gamery typefaces on other Chinese boards. The characters are quite thin so it doesn't accentuate those little slits that they have so it's not so bad but they're still a letdown in my opinion as a cleaner and more simpler typeface would have tied up the whole minimalistic aesthetic design although your taste may vary. Turning the board over we have a large DeBoss logo which reveals the more glossy plastic underneath and underneath that is the very faint labelling of the keyboard name and country of origin. There are also four rubber triangular feet with no flip up feet or anything which is the usual on these boards as it already has the incline profile. Also note that there's no dip switches like on other 60% keyboards. 
Taking the keycaps off, we can see the red switches. And one of the coolest things about this keyboard is that it uses Gatoron switches. Gatoron switches are Chinese clones of the German-made Cherry MX switches, but surprisingly, they're considered more superior. The main advantage of Gatoron switches is that they're smoother and not as scratchy as the Cherry MX switches, and they're also cheaper. These ones feature a clear top casing so that it distributes the SMD LED lighting a bit better. The reds in particular mimic their Cherry MX counterparts, so they're linear switches meaning that there's no bump, and are very light at a 45 gram actuation force. However, since they're smoother, they feel a touch lighter, offering less resistance. And here's a quick sound test. So as we can hear, the stabilized keys, especially the spacebar, are just super loud and rattly which is unfortunate. They're using cherry style stabilizers but are heaps loose and I can easily wiggle it and pop them out. This is more apparent on the red switches in comparison to say a clicky switch since it doesn't mask the sound. But these stabilized keys also feel terrible and since you're constantly pressing the spacebar when typing, it ruins the typing experience although this may be limited to my unit. And it's also available in the other key switch types. The keycaps are decent, they're said to be PBT so the white won't yellow over time and it has a nice slight texture to it. It's also double shot so it features two pieces of plastic to create the clear legend, meaning that it'll never fade away. And on the rear is the micro USB port as opposed to a more standard mini USB port. So one way to use the keyboard is to plug it in via the micro USB cable and that will get it working straight away and won't require charging but the other way of course is via Bluetooth. If your device has built in Bluetooth like a laptop, tablet or phone then just connect it by holding the function key and the B key and it will start flashing. The keyboard can hold up to 4 devices so press a number from 1 to 4 to save it to that number and just put in the numbers that come up on your device. The Bluetooth typing experience is okay, it's a bit sluggish and you can notice it when typing at a reasonable pace, but so far it hasn't hindered my ability to type accurately and the connection was also really strong with a line of sight distance of easily over 10 meters. The lighting on this is great and the colors are vibrant and rich and also since it does have a wide spectrum of colors, the gradient is smooth in the wave effect. The lighting is controlled via the function key and the letters R, T, Y and U. The RGB button turns it on and off. The T key controls the rate of the given effect. Y controls the brightness in which there are 10 including off. And U changes the different modes. Pressing the mode button goes through 9 different steel colours to fit your setup. Then there's the French, Italian and Argentinian flag for whatever reason. Then there's the effects modes with breathing. Wave, singular reactive, then a different reactive, and then this colourful mode. So there's a decent amount of modes and colours on board, but if you want to take full advantage of the RGB lighting and also other functions of the keyboard, then you'll have to download the app which I'll link below, but basically you have to control it with your mobile device since the software is available on Android and iOS. In the app, the lighting is pretty much the same except you can make custom colored layouts and save them. You can customize each individual key or quickly change colors of just the alphas or the modifiers. In the alignment section, we can customize the layout of the keyboard which is really cool. So you can make it to suit your needs. There's some layout saved already which includes a Mac layout. But you can create and save completely custom layouts so you can put whatever letter or number or whatever wherever you want and it can be done across two layers which is accessible via the function key. Therefore if you wanted to you can put in dedicated arrow keys. In the macro definition section you can record and create macros which may be helpful in games or work programs for better efficiency. 
And in the settings section, we can just see some miscellaneous things. So the keyboard really is capable of a lot via this app. However, this does mean that you have to use your mobile device to do this, which may be annoying for some. And it will take up one slot in the devices list, but that's not really a problem for me. I asked around and others have reported of about a week of use with the LEDs on and much much longer with the lighting off so that's some pretty good battery life. Opening the keyboard is extremely simple since it only has a bottom shell. There are 5 Phillips head screws under a couple of keycaps and it comes apart in two pieces. We have the ABS plastic bottom shell which feels quite strong and also has some shallow ribbing on the bottom surface for reinforcement. The screw bosses are also reinforced and quite thick, and the outer rim is about 2.5mm thick. And what everyone wants to know is how it compares to a standard case design. And unfortunately it's somewhat bad news. The black case is a standard 60% case design and is from my Poker 2 keyboard. As we can see they're similar but not the same. First of all, in the AND Pro case there's a large cleared area for the battery but that really isn't a problem since you can simply cut a bit of plastic on other cases, but for thinner profile cases this may be a problem. Taking the battery out and trying it on, it does have a lot more wiggle room since it's a smaller PCB. The top two holes don't align perfectly, but it's very close and it still screws into place, however all of the other holes don't. So if you press down on the bottom of the keyboard, it does have some downwards movement, but mainly towards the right. But typing on it isn't too bad, but these are just red so it's very light, and I guess it depends on how hard you press on the keyboard. However, this can be fixed. The most secure way would be to try and put in another standoff, or the simplest way is to just get something that's not conductive and get it to the correct height and then just stick it at the bottom of the case and it will just act as a support. If you just keep it on your desk, the two screws are more than enough and will keep it down with no upward movement. So yeah, it's not 100% compatible, but you can definitely make it work, which is great news for anyone who wants to get other available aftermarket cases. And also, you can't put a poker in this case since it's too big, and it also doesn't have a hole for the dip switches. Also, the little header for the battery to plug into isn't really secure, and mine fell off, so be careful with that. The battery also isn't secured by any adhesive or anything, Early users had issues with the battery being punctured by the sharp shoulder joints on the back of the PCB, so it has two pieces of foam to protect it. Previously, I've seen just one piece of foam, so I'm not too sure, but I think that's the solution that they came up with. Looking at the rest of it, we have the PCB, which is mounted onto a white painted steel backplate. Everything is pretty standard on the back. We have SMD backlighting, so the LEDs are mounted onto the PCB rather than having the usual 3mm through hole LEDs, so that just makes it easier to replace key switches if you wanted to. The keyboard features N key rollover and features diodes for each switch and features two ARM Cortex M3 processors. So I'm just really impressed with this mechanical keyboard. For a Chinese board, this is one of the best I've come across. The 60% form factor may be scary for some, but they are an extremely popular form factor in the enthusiast community due to its size and functionality and its wide availability. This is definitely a form factor that many would have to get used to, especially having to go without dedicated arrow keys is a very common complaint, although with the remapping tool you can make dedicated arrow keys if you wanted to. The build quality is quite good and it comes with Gatoron switches which I regard as superior to Cherry MX switches and it just looks great especially since you can choose the colour of your case plus the lighting is also really vibrant. My only complaints is the somewhat ugly font. I feel like a simpler font would have benefited the keyboard nicely to complete that minimalist design but your taste may vary. Also the stabilizers on mine are super loose and rattly but this is more apparent on red switches. Thanks again to Banggood.com for providing this keyboard for review. It's a worldwide website which I know many of you will know and at the time of this video it's at a promotional price for only a short amount of time and I'll link that in the description. Soon I'll also be having a look at the RK61 which is a similar keyboard and is cheaper so stay tuned for that.